Okay, so now we have the ability to get real-time um, performance statistics. We can get the average step time, or how long does it take our physics to make one step on average over the course of one second, and then how many bodies were in the step. Let's talk about improving performance, and we're going to improve performance using the axis line bounding boxes that we created earlier. But before we do that, let's go ahead and get a baseline here. So right now I'm going to go ahead and stack just a bunch of boxes here. Uh, maybe I'll get it up to 100 boxes total, and we'll just see how long that takes. Okay, we have 96. Let's put four more in there. Okay, 100 boxes, and it's telling us with 100 boxes stacked, it's taking about 6.5 milliseconds. All right, so let's see if we can improve that now by using the axis align bounding boxes struct that we created to then do the initial collision detection with the axis align bounding box instead of going straight to the separating axis theorem. So here we are back in the world step. Let's go down to the collision step. And inside the collision step, every time I get a body, I'm also going to get the axis align bounding box for that body as well. So let's get a flat axis align bounding box. And I'm just going to call this body A axis align bounding box. And then I'm going to tell the body that I just want to get the axis align bounding box for that body. Uh, let's go down here and do that same thing for body B. Okay, so now I have an axis align bounding box for each body, and what I want to do is test the axis align bounding box for intersection before I go ahead and do this actual collision function here. So if the axis align bounding boxes aren't colliding, we don't have to do the more complicated collision function right here. But I don't actually have a function for that yet. I don't have a function to compare axis line bounding boxes. So let's go back into the collisions class and let's make a function for comparing axis line bounding boxes. Okay, I'm going to call this intersect AABBs. We're going to pass in the axis line bounding boxes. Okay, and we just have two of them there. Before I actually write this function, let's go ahead and draw what it looks like. Okay, so an axis line bounding box will look something like this. We'll call this A. And then we'll call this one B. Uh, so this edge right here, I'm going to call this the max of A. And then I'm going to call this the min of B. We'll call this one the max of B. Then over here we'll call this leftmost edge. This will be the min of A. And it's going to work the same way whether we're on the y-axis or the x-axis, but we're just comparing this min and max. And you can see this is almost exactly what we do in the separating axis theorem. So all we have to do is compare the max of one to the min of the other. And if they are separated, then we know that the shapes are not overlapping. And we just have to do that for both axes. So we do this on the x, and then we do it on the y, and then we can tell if they're separated or not. So back in our code, if a maximum on the x-axis is less than or equal to b minimum on the x-axis, um, then we are separated, okay? But we have a few more tests to do. Um, so now we need to test the other maximum on B to see if that's less than the minimum of A. So now we're going to test to see if the B max on the X axis is less than or equal to the A min on the X axis. Okay. Uh, then we know they are separated. So we'll return false. Otherwise, we will return true. And so that's pretty much it for the algorithm. The only other thing is that's the x-axis test. Now we need to go along the y-axis and test that one as well. So I'm just going to copy this same thing. Let's put it on a new line here. And instead of this being the x-axis, we're going to change all of these to y's. So it's the same exact test. We're just testing on the y-axis. All right, and that's all there is to it for testing intersection between um, axis aligned bounding boxes. Now let's go back to our world class. Now that we have the axis align bounding box for each one of the shapes, before I do this more complicated collide function, let's just test the axis align bounding boxes. All right, so let's intersect the axis align bounding boxes. We're going to pass in the two axis align bounding boxes. Okay, then we want to determine if they're not intersecting. So if these, I'm going to put the not symbol here, and if they are not intersecting, we're just going to go ahead and continue on to do them to the next test. What we're doing here is we're doing the intersection test. If they are not intersecting, let's just continue on to the next test. And so what I'm hoping is that this will save us a lot of time, meaning that this function 
will be a lot easier to perform than this more complicated collide function. And so things should speed up dramatically, or at least I'm hoping they will. So now that we have that simple change there where we get the axis line bounding boxes for each shape, we test to see if the axis line bounding boxes are intersecting. If they're not, we just go on to the next test. Um, let's run this and just see how much performance increase that will give us. All right, so here we are. And just as a reminder, I am in release mode, so we're going with all the optimizations on. And last time we had a body count of 100, and it was taking about 6.5 milliseconds. And so let's just go ahead and stack up 100 boxes here. So we're at 54, and I can already tell it's sped up dramatically. We're, we're at 54 boxes, and we're still under a millisecond. So let's go ahead and add a bunch more. We've got to get up to 100 here to get at least a similar test. Okay, so what are we at now? Uh, 97 and about one and a half milliseconds. Let's add three more boxes just to get the same amount. Okay, there we are. So 100 boxes, and the step now is taking 1.5 to 1.6 milliseconds. Uh, that looks like a dramatic increase. In fact, uh, before it was taking us about six and a half. And if I divide that by the current amount, so it was about uh, 1.5 milliseconds, about a four times increase, a four four point three times increase, um, and you can see the time step there is the time step now is sitting about 1.8, but if I bring it back up to the front, it should go back to full speed. Yeah, so about a one and a half milliseconds to do it now, where before it took us about six and a half milliseconds. So huge speed increase. In fact, we figured. It's about a four times speed increase from what we were doing before. And so I should be able to add a lot more bodies here. In fact, let's just add a bunch and see what we can get. You know, even at 140 bodies, we're just over two milliseconds right now. So that's how we can use axis line bounding boxes to get a dramatic speed increase for our engine.